and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm the hydrogen systems program manager for the University of Hawaii's Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'll be presenting HNEI's hydrogen and clean transportation program to you today. And um, I hope you'll find this interesting. It's a pretty uh, significant program for HNEI and for the state of Hawaii. So uh, first of all, I want to uh, tell you a little bit about HNEI. So can we have the next slide, please? So um, the Hawaii uh, Natural Energy Institute's areas of interest includes uh, al alternative fuels. That, that includes biomass and biofuels, hydrogen, of which I'm part of, and methane hydrates. So we've had major programs in all of these areas. Uh, we also have big programs on electrochemical power systems. By that, I mean fuel cells and battery energy storage. We also look at various renewable energy uh, sources, including ocean energy, uh, off uh, offshore thermal energy, ocean thermal energy conversion, and a wave energy. And in the picture up here at the top, you'll see that yellow thing, that's a, that's a wave energy buoy. And then uh, down below that is one of our batteries. That's a one megawatt battery on the uh, northern end of the big island, island of Hawaii, as we say here in Hawaii. So we do a lot of systems integration and uh, grid work. We model our grids and conduct analysis to uh, inform uh, policy so we can make sure that we operate the grids in the best possible way. Uh, we also uh, evaluate transportation systems and we look at smart grid development. We have a significant program in energy efficiency, uh, particularly building technology. And the picture you see there at the bottom, the third picture in the bottom is a net zero classroom located on our campus here at the University of Hawaii. By net zero, uh, we mean that it, uh, that it makes as much energy as it uses or in some cases, slightly more energy than it uses. And then we have a significant uh, program looking at policy and resilience for uh, Hawaii so that our legislators can make informed policy decisions and come up with the right policies. So we also look, uh, that includes Department of Defense facilities, that's DOD, and also the grid, once again, the grid systems on the, uh, in, in Hawaii. The next slide, please. So I want to start off talking about hydrogen and what I call the, uh, the magic of hydrogen. The reason I call it the, the magic is because it starts with water and it ends with water. So when you use it, it only produces water. So you start off with an energy source like the sun or the wind, and you take the electricity and you run it in an electrolyzer and you make hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, the oxygen can actually be used uh, Generally, it's vented off. You can also use it for other things. Like uh, in Hawaii, we had a uh, we ran out of uh, oxygen at some of our hospitals on the Big Island, and we were asked to provide oxygen to supplement our oxygen systems. We also use it in fish farming uh, by by bubbling it into a fish tank. Uh, the fish require 25% less energy to oxygenate themselves. And you actually get like about 25 to 30% more protein for the amount of food you, you uh, feed them. So it uh, increases the productivity uh, of your uh, aquaculture. So when we don't need to use the uh, sunlight, we store it as hydrogen and energy storage. And then at some point when we need energy, we convert it back into electricity through a device called a fuel cell. And for example, the Mirai, you people, uh, in Japan, you all know about Mirai, um, meaning the future. And so that converts the hydrogen combined with oxygen out of the air into electricity, which drives the car. It's essentially an electric vehicle. And the uh, result of that is water. It only uh, hot water. And uh, then you can recycle it. It's perfectly pure water. And then you can recycle it back. So it's the perfect cycle. Um, and uh, as I said there, at the bottom of this slide, um, I hope if, if you can get a copy of these slides, there's a link um, to a, a website that gives an animation. It's about two and a half minute long animation. It's really good. And it describes uh, all about hydrogen and the hydrogen economy. 
So I, I really uh, encourage you to go to that website, uh, that, which was produced by HCAT. Next slide, please. So here are the top level objectives of the, our hydrogen program. Really right now, we're, we're focused on fuel cell electric buses for public transportation. So why do we do that? Well, first of all, we're using taxpayer money right now uh, to support uh, public transportation. And we want the uh, general public to get a chance to uh, experience what a fuel cell electric vehicle is, in this case, a bus. And so it educates the public and uh, generates public support. And, and once you have public support, then you can gain political support. If the public was against it, then the political uh, class uh, would not necessarily support the program. And uh, it's hard to justify taxpayers' dollars if the public itself, if the taxpayers don't actually support the program. So secondary objective is obviously, we want to provide cost competitive hydrogen. If, if a, Hydrogen is so expensive that it, it's a real uh, economic liability that nobody's going to want to use it. So right now it's still pretty expensive. It depends on the cost of your electricity. But we part of our program is to look at ways to drive that cost down so that our hydrogen is competitive with current transportation fuel like diesel or gasoline. In this case, in buses, it's usually uh, diesel. Uh, in our in course of doing that. We want to increase the use of renewable energy resources. As you all know, the cost of PV has dropped significantly. On the mainland, you're getting uh, power purchase agreements at around two cents a kilowatt hour. And here in Hawaii, we've seen them as low as eight and eight and a half cents a kilowatt hour. And as long as your cost of electricity is below 10 cents a kilowatt hour, hydrogen is pretty close to being competitive with diesel fuel. And that's not looking at all the other value added uh, propositions associated with using hydrogen, like cleaning up the environment and, uh, and, and providing a, a, better, a better transportation mode. So we also need to install this at, at scale, what we call it scale. That means at utility scale. These are not little desktop experiments. You have to make these in, at the multi-megawatt scale um, and, and, and install the infrastructure to be able to do that. So that's part of our program. Uh, it's the looking how we do that, what's the pathway, you know, work with the electric utility and uh, you know, as a team and uh, see how we can make that happen. Um, you know, next is to leverage industrial benefits. So what does I mean by that? It means that you know, if I'm importing buses that are already assembled on the mainland in our case, then I'm supporting somebody else's economy. But if I can import the components and assemble them here in Hawaii, then I'm promoting our own industry and, and providing benefits and jobs to our local uh, people. 75% uh, of the money would stay in the local economy and we train our people in, in high tech. And then we have people that know how to maintain the buses and how to, how to operate them. And finally, my project is mainly on the on the big island, as you will see now, and that was on purpose. Um, it was by legislation, actually. The legislature demanded that we do that. But once we have it up and running and we've learned the lessons, we want to transfer those lessons learned to all the other neighbor islands like Oahu and Maui and Kauai. Next slide. So uh, this picture is a picture of my first hydrogen station or the HNEI's first hydrogen station at the Marine Corps base here on Kaneohe Bay, where I'm located right now, working out of my home on Kaneohe Bay. And uh, this was a, uh, the first uh, hydrogen station in Hawaii. It was, uh, well, maybe the second. They had one at uh, Hickam Air Force Base. But this one is totally automated. And you could uh, 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 monitor it remotely over the internet. It was a 700 bar, that's like 10,000 PSI, fast fill, which meant under five minutes, and uh, also 350 bar, kind of a slow fill. But the idea of this was to make it the same experience for the driver as if he went up to his local gas station and self-filled his car. So we had no attendant. The driver just goes out and uh, operates the uh, dispenser. It was all computer controlled. 
all you have to do is hit a button, connect the nozzle like you would with a gasoline uh, car, and the computer system would take over and fill the vehicle. And once again, I have a little link at the bottom of the slide that's a two minute little video uh, which shows uh, how the station worked and shows how we filled the cars. So uh, I invite you to go to that link. Next uh, slide, please. Okay, so here's the overall concept on the Big Island. So on the left is uh, uh, the Kona, that's the right beside the big international airport on the west side of the island. And uh, there we have our main production station, and we also have a dispensing capability at that station. But we also wanted to provide dispensing at the main bus depot, which is over in Hilo on the east side, which is on the right hand side of this graphic. In order to do that, we would have to transport hydrogen from uh, the uh, Kona side or from Nelha side over to the Hilo side. And to do that, we have tube trailers. So we have three tube trailers and you'll see pictures of them later on in this presentation. And the idea is you uh, drag, a, uh, you, you haul a full trailer over and uh, drop it off. And then you pick up an empty trailer and bring it back to be refilled. And in order to really support this whole program, we decided we needed uh, three of these trailers. So that's essentially how it, uh, is operating and it's an example of central production and distributed dispensing, just like refineries. So you can look at the, uh, the, heat, uh, the Kona side uh, on the left as, a, as a, a refinery producing hydrogen and then delivering it to where you want it dispensed. Next slide, please. So here is a uh, 3D rendering of our station at uh, at the uh, Natural Energy Lab Authority of Hawaii on the Big Island that I was showing you. Um, I don't expect you to be able to read all the labels, but I just wanted to say uh, this is what the design was looking like. And I want to shout out to my tech, Aaron McCall, who did this on uh, SketchUp, and he does a great job. So well done, Aaron. Um, next slide, please. So uh, this is not an experiment. As you can see, this is a major construction project. And what we see here is the size of some of the equipment uh, that had to break ground. We were on very hard lava rock. I think they call it blue rock. And they, uh, that's a bit massive jackhammer. As you can see, this is, this is big stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it took a lot of work. Uh, next slide. And I'm going to be showing you uh, several slides now, so that's just not all death by PowerPoint. So uh, in this slide, uh, we see the, uh, the concrete slab uh, being ready to be poured. It's just uh, before sunrise on the, uh, on the Big Island. And uh, I want to point out, you'll see a lot of rebar. Those are those, me that's that metal patchwork there. <clears throat> Part of um, hydrogen is all, each of those, uh, uh, rods is grounded. So it's grounding is very important for hydrogen to dissipate any static electricity. So it's a major part of the design process is to put in an adequate grounding system. And then from that, the, the concrete was poured and it's like watching an orchestra uh, performing. I mean, these guys have it down to a, a fine art. So next, uh, next slide, you'll see it. And this is what it, uh, the, the entrance to the uh, station after it was finished. And uh, we have a nice little sign there. You can see the dispenser, the blue thing on the right looks like your gas station dispenser. And of course we use shipping containers to house all the equipment. I have more pictures. So the next slide, please. So here's an aerial view of the system. Looks a lot like that 3D rendering, doesn't it? That's, that's how good my Aaron, what a great job he did. And so um, in the upper part of the slide, you'll see a 40 foot shipping container and that houses on the right, a big compressor in the middle, there's the electrolyzer and on the left hand end is our electrical room. And then our electrical supplies are on a, uh, a concrete wall on the other side of the uh, 40 foot container. And then you'll see under the awning, we have an awning to cover the uh, dispensing system. And then on the left, you'll see two awnings and uh, slots, and those are spaces where we park our uh, tube trailers to fill them. 
And also we use one of the tube trailers to supply hydrogen to our dispenser. Everything goes underground. So there's no above ground uh, pipe, pipe work. It's very clean. And uh, our uh, construction company, NAN Construction, shout out, they did an awesome job. Beautiful job, so thank you, Nan. Next slide. Uh, here's a different angle, and you can see it's a very clean looking uh, um, uh, site and uh, a system. And we did that on purpose because we wanted to look good uh, as part of our marketing. Uh, you know, it's nothing better than having a site that's properly designed and looks really good so that the public can really appreciate, you know, what, it, what it's supposed to look like. And it's you know very professional. And next slide, please. So here's a view of the dispenser. Um, you'll see it looks exactly like a dispenser, a regular gas station. And um, you know, except the only thing is it dispenses hydrogen instead of gasoline. But if you look at it, it's there. It's, like I said previously, it's all computer controlled and uh, operated, and it's remotely monitored. So we don't need an actual person there. Um, and, and you know the computers and safety systems are set up so it's fail safe. If a problem happens, the sensors sec sent something out of specification, they shut the whole station down and send us a, uh, an alarm message uh, by uh, over the internet. Next slide. So here's one of those tube trailers I was telling you about. Not quite as big as a big industrial one. Um, so but this carries about 100 kilograms of hydrogen, which is roughly equivalent to about 200 gallons of gasoline. And, uh, and, and the next slide, please. Uh, this is what it looks like under that skin. And uh, this is all carefully engineered uh, for safety. And you can see at the, on the left-hand side, that cage, it's all high tensile steel. Uh, every um, weld was x-rayed and it was, uh, this was uh, inspected by the US Department of Transportation and they uh, qualified or licensed it for operation on all roads in the United States. This is a federal thing. It's not uh, a uh, state uh, thing. The federal has jurisdiction over uh, transportation of this kind of a trailer on public roads throughout the US. And uh, next slide, please. So here's what it's all about. This is a uh, hydrogen fuel cell electric bus. I'm very proud of this one. It's a beautiful bus. 29 passengers has a uh, 40 uh, kilowatt US hybrid uh, fuel cell in it. And um, it's completely ADA compliant. So we can take up to two wheelchairs on it. Um, and it's a very quiet ride. And passengers are going to love it. Next slide, please. So I wanted to point this out because a lot of people say, oh, the cost of a hydrogen bus is so much more than a diesel bus. Uh, I have two comments on that. First of all, I thought we wanted to get away from diesel. So why are we comparing it to a diesel bus? But secondly, we installed a power export unit on it, which means we're able to export 10 kilowatts of 110 or 220 volt AC power for 30 hours. So just think about it, your bus, your buses become mobile emergency backup units. If a tsunami hits or a hurricane hits, like in Okinawa, you know, they may knock down your power lines. Well, you've got, depending on the number of buses, you have all these buses that can go out and provide power to your hospitals, to your shelters, to your communications, uh, helping clearing trees, you know, if you have electrically powered cha chainsaws, all that kind of stuff. So that's a huge value proposition where you're leveraging this asset instead of just parking it and hiding it. Diesel buses can't do this. And the incredible thing is this bus can be refueled in 30 minutes or actually less than 30 minutes. And people say, well, how can you refuel it if you don't have any power? Well, we have power, which we generate. So we can power up our dispenser to operate and, and make sure you know, the bus gets refueled. So it's a great asset. Our civil defense people love this concept and uh, the, the, uh, the taxpayers should love it too because eventually it could save their life. Next slide. So I wanna talk about a really unique program that was developed here in Hawaii. And this is how you can make a giant leap forward. This is the next kind of three slides are very important slides. 
So, you know, traditionally, at least here in Hawaii, we buy our buses kind of piecemeal, you know, two or three one year, four the next year, or some years the budgets are tight, no buses. And so I guess this, you know, it's really hard to manage it and it'll take a long time to convert the fleet over to hydrogen or to zero emission buses, you know, if that's the way you're gonna do it. Well, this program allows you to buy a fleet of 50 buses in one shot if you want it and all the infrastructure and everything else you need to run it. And we do that through a public private partnership and it's called transportation services contracting. So the, the private entity comes in and uh, they get a work order, a task order to provide the buses, the infrastructure on a user fee basis. It's not a lease, it's a user fee like on a per mile basis, for example. So it's similar to a contract with an electric or a gas utility, but it's not providing financing to the state. So there's no minimum amount of services required. And here's what the financing people like. What, what they get is a, in this case, for the first contract, a, a 10 year term and a guaranteed return on investment. So it's a recurring revenue contract. And so the large pension funds uh, really like this kind of a deal because they've got a guaranteed um, return on their investment for their shareholders. And the, the other thing is, is that the, the uh, private entity can keep uh, ownership of the vehicle. So if it's not being used by the county or the state, uh, you know, the government entity, then they can rent it out. So if I need a bus after school to take my kids to a, a soccer game, I can rent one of these buses from the private company and operate it and then return it to the county when it's needed by the county. If I wanted a dump truck on the weekend to move garbage or whatever, same thing. So this is a great, great program that allows you to leapfrog and get moving on this thing uh, quickly and, and, and you know, get that conversion done so we can meet our zero emission uh, goals that we've set especially here in Hawaii, where we say we're gonna be 100% renewable by 2045. Well, we gotta get mo moving. Next slide, please. So the first contract has actually been awarded to a company called Sustainability Partners, Inc. And this is a template or a model that you can use in Okinawa or any place in the world. So what we've provided here is uh, there's a master agreement uh, which was approved by the state's attorney general just like in November of this year, that's like two months ago. And the county of uh, Hawaii will evaluate and explore other things that they wanna put into that master agreement. For example, they may wanna buy some buses. And um, so this is a model, as I said, for converting uh, you know, government transportation fleets over quickly at scale. And so what I have here at the bottom is a link to the RFP. Now this RFP was helped, was developed by a lot of people. It took many months to develop the RFP and it was reviewed by all the various funding agencies to make sure that the language in there was fundable, particularly by private industry. So this has been through a, a, a very significant review process. So if you wanna try this program out, you can click on that link and you can get the documentation that we use. Next, next slide. So the other component was we had to have legislation to actually allow this to happen, to authorize the county and the state government to be able to enter into this kind of agreement. So this is the actual uh, legislation that was prepared. It's called Bill, House Bill 401, and it was passed in 2019. And uh, in it, you'll see all the language uh, for this legislation. So if that's something that uh, you would like to do in your either state or province or on your island in Okinawa, for example, um, then I have a link to that legislation. Uh, you can link to that and look at how we did it. And then, okay, you may need to make some modifications to fit your own uh, you know, situation wherever you are. But that's how we did it here in Hawaii. And I think that's really an exportable thing we can have in Hawaii, not to make money for Hawaii, but for to get everybody, you know, to give them the benefit of 
for what we've learned here. And I want to give a shout out to Riley Sato of the Big Island Research and Development Department. This was his baby, and he, uh, he stick handled this through. And the amazing thing is that legislation was passed in the first year. Normally, it takes three or four years to get legislation through here in Hawaii anyway, as, you know, as it's fine-tuned. But he did his homework. And so the, this is legislation, at least, that worked here in Hawaii. Our next slide, I think, is my last slide. <clears throat> so yeah, this is my last slide. I just want to say aloha again. And I've given my uh, coordinates, um, how you can contact me. Uh, if you want any additional information, uh, we're happy to help. That's what we're here for. We're the university. We're here to help you. And so uh, that's that's the end of my presentation. And so this is Mitch Yuan from Hawaii, the state of clean energy, signing off. And I hope you find this uh, has been a useful uh, presentation. Aloha.